Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to my YouTube channel. When you first learn economics, your teacher's gonna throw all sorts of stuff at you. It gets pretty confusing, but you put it all together, it starts making a lot more sense. By the time you get to elasticity, you start to get overwhelmed. No, oh, jeez. Ah! <laughs> Remember, I made this video to summarize all the key concepts to get them back in your brain. So if you haven't already watched my elasticity video and my elasticity practice video, go watch those first, then come back and watch this video. Because in this one, I'm gonna summarize everything and then give you a resource at the very end that's gonna help you practice. Thanks. So you've already learned the law of demand, the idea there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity showing you a downward sloping demand curve. Beep, boop, 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 boop. And you've already learned the law of supply showing you a direct relationship between price and the quantity supply showing you an upward sloping supply curve. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The whole idea of elasticity is to show you that the shape of these curves change depending on the market and the product. So let's talk about the four types of elasticity. The first one is price elasticity of demand. Then I have pizza for price elasticity of supply. Then I have a hot dog for cross price elasticity. And last, I've got some cup of noodles for the income elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand shows how sensitive quantity demand it is to a change in price. And it all depends on how many substitutes there are for that good. So obviously there's a lot of substitutes for hamburgers, so you expect the demand to be very elastic. A quantity is very sensitive to a change in price. This would result in a relatively flat demand curve, but keep in mind it depends on some other factors. Yes, in general, a steeper demand curve and supply curve is more inelastic, and a flatter demand and supply curve is more elastic, but it depends on the actual numbers. The same demand curve with the same slope can have different elasticity depending on where you are. So the the point here is elasticity is not the same as slope. And the good news is the equation for all four types of elasticity is basically the same. For price elasticity demand, it's the percent change in the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in the price of that product. It's the same equation even for elasticity of supply. So the price elasticity of supply equation is the percent change in the quantity supply divided by the percent change in price. And it's the same idea for cross price elasticity. It's the percent change in the quantity demanded of one product, let's say hot dog buns, as a result of a price of a different product, let's say hot dogs. The only one that's really different is the one that's the income elasticity of demand. This one's a little different because it's the percent change in the quantity demanded resulting from a percent change in income. So it's basically the same equation over and over again, but remember it's the percent change in quantity and the percent change in price. It's not the raw change in quantity and the raw change in price. So make sure you know how to calculate percent change. Now for both price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply, that coefficient gives you some information. When that number is zero, that means the demand or the supply is perfectly inelastic. When it's less than one, it's relatively inelastic. When it's one, unilastic. When it's greater than one, that's relatively elastic. And the last one, it's perfectly elastic. In both cases, these numbers tell you what type of curve you're looking at. But it's not the same with these. In this case, we're not just looking at the number, we're looking at the positive and the negative sign. That's giving us information about these products. For example, if the price goes up for hot dogs and that causes the quantity demanded for hot dog buns to decrease, that's a negative number. One goes up, one goes down. Negative number means those are complements. But if the price were to go up for one product and people would buy more of the other product, that means those two things are substitutes. By the way, here's a trick to help you remember that. Look at the word substitutes. It has a bunch of T's in it. Those T's look like positive signs and so just remember if it's positive those are substitutes. Now on the other side if income goes up and the coin demanded for a good falls that makes it a negative number that makes it an inferior good and if incomes go up and people buy more of something that makes it a normal good. So remember positive sign is normal good negative sign it's an inferior good. So to put it all together if you're looking at either of these it doesn't matter what the sign is positive negative it doesn't matter it's just telling you the shape of the curve. For these the sign totally matters positive or negative tells you if they're substitutes or complements or normal or inferior. Glad you came along, partner. Now there's one more thing I have to talk about when we talk about elasticity of demand. There's another way other than calculating the elasticity demand coefficient of figuring out if the demand is elastic or inelastic or unelastic. It's called the total revenue test. Remember this only works with demand. It does not work with supply at all. So this is another way you can figure out if the demand is elastic or inelastic. You look at the change in price. What happened to price to go up or go down and what happened to the total revenue. And if you saw the end of my elasticity video then you remember there's a trick I gave you using your arms for the total revenue test. When the price goes up and the total revenue goes up, I look like an eye. If you look like an eye, 
that's inelastic. If price goes down, total revenue goes down, I still look like an I, inelastic. But if price goes up and total revenue goes down, I don't look like an I, that must be elastic. If price goes down, total revenue goes up, I don't look like an I, then that makes it elastic. That's crazy. I'm about to give you a practice sheet that's gonna help you practice and calculating all these numbers. Before we do so, let's talk about what's gonna go on the wall behind me. As you know, every episode I add something to the wall. This one's quite obvious. I'm gonna add in the burger for the price elasticity demand. We've got the pizza for price elasticity of supply, the hot dog for cross price elasticity demand, and of course, we've got the cup of noodles showing you income elasticity, the coefficient, how to calculate these. You're gonna remember all that stuff by seeing this on the wall. But don't go anywhere. It's time for a pop quiz. No! Like always, I'm going to put some practice multiple choice questions at the end of this video to help you practice and make sure you understand all these concepts. The answer key is in the comments below, so look down there for the right answers. But to help you really practice and understand elasticity, I'm going to give you this. This practice sheet covers it all. Elasticity demand, supply, cross price, income elasticity. There's questions covering all those and all the answers and explanations as well. I added it to the free trial of my ultimate review packet. The link is in the description below. Just follow the link. It'll tell you how to get access to this thing. It's inside unit two. Download the PDF, try those questions, do those calculations, and then look at the answer key to verify you're getting it. If you can do that, then you're totally ready and you understand elasticity. Hey, do me a favor. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And also give me a like on this video if you like these videos, if they're helping you learn and love economics. Thanks for watching. Until next time.